Oh boy, I should have downshifted. So here we are out in the woods. We'll go for a quick little run. This is just the trail light only. Should have fully charged the battery down to just a little bit here, but hey, you can kind of see it, I mean. You just have to look around the corner. I'm not running a helmet light or anything like that. And it just lets you feel far more comfortable riding through. You can just kind of see what's coming. Now, I kind of know this trail pretty well. But if you really want to see the difference between a good light and your typical bike light. Well, all we got to do is just turn this on so you can see it's powering up. We're not changing anything to the uh, auto exposure or anything like that. Now, let's just turn off this light. Now, all of a sudden, wow, it's like really hard to see around corners. And this is why a lot of people are like, hey, you know, if you're going night riding, you absolutely need a bar mounted light and a helmet light or you just need to run a helmet light on its own because you need to be able to look where you're trying to go which I absolutely agree with with using any kind of old school bike light like this because it is it is hard to ride but this is what people are used to and a lot of the higher end lights that are retailing a lot higher. They got better electronics, better materials. But for the most part, it's still just this circular spot beam pattern, which, let me stop here for a second. Which the circular beam pattern is great for a single photo, like when you're trying to show off like how far you can see, because a photo is just gonna tell you a static picture. Now, if I turn on the trail light here, you see that technically, if I turn this light off, technically, all right, that light let me see see a little bit further, but I'm now losing all of the information that my eye can pick up that you can see with this width here. Now, let's just keep riding now with this. And you can see it, it, it gives you so much more information for your eye to pick up because your eye is working, has what's called binocular vision. That's what lets you have depth perception. You can kind of see where things are going and things like that. And, what it really relies on the amount of light that it can pick up between a 120 degree beam pattern. Well, I shouldn't say beam pattern. The 120 degree field of view. So whatever your eye is picking up uh, through that field of view, um, that's what's gonna let you, your brain figure out how far away something is and quickly figure out, identify an object and things like that. But, uh, most bike lights, they're focused on a little, oh, here, let me get some speed here. They're focused on just <clears throat> a very narrow range. So in a photo, it might look all right, but once you start moving and you're moving around and the handlebars moving around, the image around you that you're riding around on is moving, then it just becomes very, very hard to discern what's going on around you and you end up feeling way very uncomfortable riding at night because you feels like you've got tunnel vision. You can't really see where you're going. That's all understandable with a typical light. But when you got a light like the outbound lighting uh, trail edition here on the trail, you can see just how unbelievably wide it's going. And I don't know if the camera is picking up all the residual light, but I'm putting my hand out sort of where the edge of the light is. That I, man, I should probably, okay, let me stop for a second. Okay, so, handlebars dead straight ahead. And my hand's right here. Now, off to my far left, I don't know if the super view is picking up, off to my far left is sort of the edge of my peripheral vision. And this bike light is still lighting up that area. It's very faint light, because you don't want to have super bright light right here or else 
your eye, instead of being focused on what's up ahead, it's going to sort of auto expose for what's right here and you're going to end up feeling like you can't see that far ahead. So that's why it's very important to have this sort of balanced lighting where you just have a very smooth, even, wide beam pattern versus, let's turn that on again. So there we go. There's this, which you can see, you can see way out there. Admittedly, you can see it a lot farther than what you can with the trail. Now, I'm not going to deny that, but when you're actually moving around, you're going around that corner, up, oh, you can't see that anymore. While with the trail light, you're still going to be able to tell something's out there. And we're talking, I'm looking at an object about 30, 40, 50 yards away. Kind of hard to tell. But that's why if you're like a really high speed downhill kind of guy, I'll show you what is really sort of the ultimate solution. So I've got the trail edition light right here. And I got on my helmet a focal edition, the, the trail light or the road light. So the road light has that sharp cutoff beam pattern that you see there, but it's a much more focused beam pattern. So the width isn't quite as high, but if you put that on your head and you get this aimed up just right now, now you're cooking. Now this is like literally the ultimate setup. Because not only are you getting to fill with the bar light, you're also now, wherever you're looking, you're getting that focused, intense beam of the road light, which, wow, there's a deer. You see that deer right there, guys? Hey, buddy. Hope you don't have a friend. We'll leave you be. Have a good one. Have a good night, sir. So, probably with a regular road light, have a regular bike light, you would have completely missed that. But man, guys, just look at this. So as I'm going down in this corner, I can look up and I can see, and this is with the road light on my head, which now we can try out turning off the bar light. So this is the road light on my head without any other light on. And you know what, it, it's not bad, it's good. Like, I feel very comfortable. There's a lot of residual light going on. The, bar, the road light's not completely focused. Uh, it's not like a narrow beam pattern. It is still fairly wide, especially down low right here, which is what I designed it to do. And then when you got it aimed up high enough, which the cutoff doesn't really affect you, as you're just constantly looking out there. But, you know, when you quickly look away, it is also nice just to have that fill, which, all right, let's put on the trail light again. And all of a sudden, this literally feels like I'm riding in daylight. Like you feel, hear that term a lot with some very expensive lights, or even people who don't really have a ton of experience with lighting in general and say, oh man, this is like the most amazing light ever feels so bright it's like daylight well i don't think they've ever actually ridden behind something like this so i really hope this gopro is picking up how much light you can see and how far you can see because it's even kind of blowing my mind i'm not gonna lie i haven't ridden with this dual setup the production version since we haven't really had a chance to ride at all beautiful night out tonight Finally have a couple of hours free. So I thought I'd finally take this GoPro out and go for a ride and man, I love what we've done here. This is just pretty and crazy. It is. So, you know, here's kind of a little bit of high speed section. Let's turn that off. Let's turn on this light again. Let's turn off the road light. Oh boy. Alrighty, let's do this. Oh boy. I'm so glad I kind of know where I'm going because this is pretty freaking sketch and catch. And I'm wanting to avoid some of the mud spots here. I don't want to rip up this trail. It's so hard to see where it's coming. Oh boy. Like. 
Here we go. I cannot see the road. There it is. Road trail. Alrighty. Oh boy. Okay. You know, I, I think this might be demonstration enough. I hope. Because I kind of really want to turn on my stuff again. Let's just turn on just the trail again here. Let's let that light up. So back to just the trail. Which if this is what your eye gets used to, it is still plenty good. Let's take another loop around here. And then let's turn on the light of my head again. So now we got the road version going. Let's rip. All right, I'm gonna try to be quiet here for a second. So, I guarantee you guys aren't gonna be absolutely blown away by my riding skills here. Raccoon, coon, get a coon. Man, picking up a lot of animals today, huh? So, man. This is seriously, <clears throat> Literally the best lighting setup I've ever used. And I've been trying out a lot of them. I don't think I'm going to be able to upload this video to YouTube fast enough. Ooh. Oh boy. I am so out of shape.